Hi there, my name is Ronald Ryan and I'd like to welcome you to this online introduction to classical painting course. The painting that this introductory course is based around is Jan Leavings, who was the partner of Rembrandt. Um, his painting of the Boy in the Yellow Robe, which is in the National Gallery of Scotland on the Mound, uh, Princess Street, Edinburgh. This first assignment breaks into um, three sections. First, there is the completion of the study. Second, there is the transferring to canvas. And third, there is the underdrawing, which is initially done in white on a red bowl canvas. Now, the study, uh, as I say, you can work from this one. You can draw from this one if you want. You can work from, you will have a, in your pack, there will be a print of the actual painting from the National Gallery of Scotland. And if you want to work direct from that, that's perfectly okay as well. Do a study. The reason for the study is that you can quickly get to know the painting well. Um, it's one of those things that you can look at it, but when you draw it out, before you go to the step of you know, creating a full painting, by doing the study you can get to understand an awful lot of the balance of the tones, of the drawing that's involved in the painting. Take your time on the study, enjoy it and get to know it. This study here has been done in char sorry, charcoal and chalk and it's on a mid-brown uh, paper that's normally used for Conte drawing. Now, once you have completed your, uh, sorry, I'll do that again. Once you have completed the study, and then it becomes time to transfer your study onto your canvas. Now, for this assignment and for this project, the canvas should have been given um, one or two coats of what would normally be referred to as red bowl. Um, some people use Venetian red. I find that using a uh, burnt sienna and painting the canvas with a burnt sienna gives you a nice medium ground to be able to work on. Now, people get very concerned about the methods of doing the transfer. As far as I'm concerned, and I would recommend to anybody doing the course that if you can get a hold of David Hockney's book, uh, secret knowledge of the old masters it will really open your eyes to how a lot of uh, classical painting was done. I won't go into all that at the moment, but suffice to say that when you're making the transfer from the study to the canvas, there is not a problem with using tracing, put a sheet of tracing paper over your study, trace out and divide it into the main areas of dark and light, and then go to your um, canvas and using one of the ones that we use when tracing is to use a carbon typing paper uh, and you can put that in behind, you'll get it in any good stationers, you can put that in behind your tracing paper and then transfer the drawing directly from the study onto your canvas. Another method that you could employ is if you have a projector which you can attach to your computer, then bring up the image and then project it onto your canvas the size that you want it to be and then again the same as the way that you were doing with the tracing only this time take a good black and yellow blank pen and go over the projection and make sure that you have the main areas of dark and light divided up. Third method that you can use is squaring up. Now squaring up, um, rather than getting out a piece of paper and showing you how to square up, um, if you think of the, you used to get it in puzzler books, where you divide the drawing, put a grid over the drawing, use tracing paper, divide it into squares, do the same to your canvas, and then each square, copy each square in detail. This was an established Renaissance method, and they would actually sometimes divide it into triangles, and they would actually put a number into each square or each triangle, and they would then in detail copy it onto the canvas.
The idea of the method is that it's quite forgivable because once you get these initial layers laid down, um, the, the whole thing is all whether the paint will be a success or a failure is in this stage that you're going to do here. Mm -hmm. The better the underdrawn is, which is to us the other paint, mm -hmm. but the better the underdrawn is, the better your paint will be. And the more detail you put in at this stage, because the rest of it literally does become sophisticated colour and then, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, once you start you having yellows on and stuff like that. But the actual tonal range, uh, the black and white design that you're going to paint just now, mm -hmm. that's everything that's in it. You know, I mean, it's like the only one they say is art college of drawings, everything. You go, but that's where it came from, is that if your design's good, your painting will be good. And just take your time with it. Once you have made the initial line drawing onto your canvas, we then move on to doing the white underpainting or underdrawing on the canvas. Now, with this all you need is flake white. Now, as you'll know, although I give you on your list a series of different brushes that you will need, when it comes to prescribing which br brush to use to at which stage, I tend not to be too prescriptive. Use what you're comfortable with. Obviously, a half inch flat is not going to do great detail, so use some pencil brushes when you're doing detail like that. Similarly, if you're blending, use a good blending brush, which can be acrylic, can be badger hair, can be whatever you can afford. And so you would use that for blending. If you watch the video carefully, you'll see the type of brushes, and I'll make a note of the type of brushes that Donald's using as he's doing each part of the drawing. Uh, sorry, of the underdrawing. Now, um, when it comes to putting the underdrawing down on your canvas, the thing that I would emphasise to you is that if you do this part correctly and you take your time and you do it in detail, you will save yourself hours of corrective painting later. This is probably the most important part sorry, important, important part of any painting is to get the underdrawing done to a good degree of detail so that you'll save yourself work at a later stage. If you follow how Donald paints, you can watch how he moves around the canvas and how he puts the different applications on. Pay particular attention to the way he uses. In the areas that are going to be the lightest, he is using a heavy application of white, which the opacity of the white, once we then come to overglaze with the colour, that will then really bring out the effect of the silk that looks in the boy's robe. Just did it again, I'm standing there going, that's a fantastic shot, I forgot to put the bloody camera on. I know, it's ridiculous, I'm, I'm standing there shooting War and Peace and all that, I'm like, yeah, shit, this looks great. Ah, right enough, record, that's one of those basic things. My sister's um, Maria's one um, of Oh, by the end of the day's painting, you should have sore calves from walking backwards to look at the painting in full focus. I mean, I would watch this. <laughs> ah, it's looking good. It's even better through the earth, isn't it? Ah, it's...
the differences in the thickness of the whites really bring up that silk, don't they? Yeah. It's quite mm. incredible. <laughs> It's amazing how, how when, you're, when you're actually concentrating on that and trying to copy something, the, the, the subtleties that you notice that you wouldn't normally have noticed mm -hmm. if you're just standing in front of it in a, a gallery. Yeah. You're actually trying to say it there. Sort of oh, you, you literally do, you get to understand the painting in an entirely different way. She's like, I gave up smoking in 1983. Once you have come to the end of this first assignment, remember to photograph your painting, email it to me as an attachment, and then I will be able to do a short crit of how you progressed on the first assignment, point out any points that you maybe have to be a wee bit stronger on, or anything at all that comes up that will help you to create a better painting. Um, each week, um, or not each week, but when uh, you're ready, we will have a short uh, Skype tutorial and any points that I think need to be covered. And again, any uh, any point, if you want to speak to me, please get in touch. We can organise a short Skype tutorial and discuss any problems that you're having. Thank you very much for uh, signing on to the course and I uh, hope you enjoy what you're doing. Thank you.